So, um, I think there's 350 of you or something registered for the webinar. So, um, I'm sure you won't all be in here and some of you will watch the recording. But just let's start because there's a lot of new faces that I don't know. So, I'd like to start by introducing myself. Um, I'm Melinda Koss and I have been coaching skincare entrepreneurs for around 15 years now and I take them basically from the kitchen sink right through to international distribution. So I've been on the journey that you're on um, and I've also worked through it with a lot of my clients and what you tend to get from me is the um, the benefit of the mistakes that I made, some very, very costly mistakes, and also the mistakes that some of my clients have made. So um, I can smell burning. Why can I smell burning? I've got cats here and chickens and a poodle. So I hope we're not going to be interrupted. Okay, so um, I am going to um, share my screen. I've got a presentation for you, so you don't have to keep staring at me. Um, one minute. One participant can share at a time. Share screen. Ah, okay. All right. And I'm going to take you on a journey now. Right, Deborah, can we just turn your mic, or your video off, darling? Faye, can you turn Deborah's video off? Um, I can't do that for her. Yes, she can. Hang on. Uh, stop video. Okay. All right, I've done it. Okay, so here we go. One minute. Uh, Slideshow. Play from the start. Okay, so let me just tell you how this is going to work. Um, so I'm going to talk you through um, this really, really critical factor about nailing your brand message. And then at the end of the webinar, I am going to, I've put together an offer for you, which I'm sure you're expecting because you're all experienced at webinars. I'll take you through this and um, then I'm going to tell you about a program that I've put together, which is on this topic. And it's actually an opportunity to work one-to-one -one with me. If you're interested in working with me, then hang on here till the end so that um, you can hear, at least hear all about it. Okay. so. There's this question that keeps coming up in forums, and it's basically, um, can you really succeed with a natural skincare business? Now, I reckon that the reason people ask that is because they're struggling to get followers, um, all, the, all the classic reasons. I mean, are any of these reasons you? Please tell me in the chat box. Any of these reasons you? Okay. Um, now, the point is this. Um, the global value of the natural and organic skin market is, 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 is absolutely massive. You can see the statistics here. Um, and there's absolutely no reason why if you've got your ducks in a row and you're a businesswoman and an entrepreneur and you're really, really, really willing to do this, that you can't be one of those. But of course, this means because of the way that the market is, is increasing, of course, this means that you've got to be better than everybody else, or you've got to be certainly as good as everybody else. So you've basically got to be special enough to get heard above the noise. And that requires a really, really clear brand message. So it's not enough to be organic. It's not enough to be natural. Um, the world has changed out of, out of all proportion in the last few months, as, as I'm sure you're, you're, you've witnessed. And you really, really need to be something special. So the next question really is, what is a brand message? And a brand message, some people think is just the slogan that you put, your, your, your tagline that you put under your, under your name, your um, brand name, your logo. And it isn't. It's, it's, it's a huge, hugely more than that. Your brand message is the ethos of your company. And it's, it, has to be, it has to be prevalent in every bit of information you put out to your audience. And basically, its job is 
to make people know that your brand is for them, that they are part of this, that you're talking to them. And there's lots and lots of different ways that you can do this. But the most important thing to remember is that you need to come up with one main brand message and you need to make sure that that is communicated in absolutely everything that you do. So let's go on about this. So what does your brand message needs to do? Well, it needs to engage the audience. It needs to make them feel part of your brand or of your journey. It needs to disrupt their thinking so that they're prepared to give up the brands that they've been using for years and move on to you. It can inspire them. Um, it can offer them a solution to a problem, or it can also make them want to be part of a clan that you are clearly part of. I mean, Apple Mac is, is a classic example of that. You know, when Apple Mac started, uh, it was aimed at graphic designers, at creatives. And people bought it because they wanted to be seen as creatives. So people like to feel that they're part of a movement or a gang. And that's never more true than now. Because right now, what is selling is community. And what is also selling is, is comfort. Um, and any, anything that can inspire people, anything. People are sitting at home waiting to be shaken out of this dreadful um, dip that we're in. And I, I have to say, I do hope wherever you are in the world that you're keeping safe. And I do hope that you realize that these are hugely exciting times right now. You know, the states has finally got their politics in line or hopefully to going towards that direction. Um, um, we've got a vaccine, you know, we're coming out of this and we're coming out of this a lot stronger and with a lot with a lot more positive. That's a chicken. I've got two chickens just wandered in the room. We're coming out of this with a, with with positive expectations and this is a hugely hugely exciting time to to build a business because you can reach so many people online and because people are now trained to do their socializing communicating purchasing online and they weren't before the pandemic so good always comes out of bad i mean i i live i live by that um premise and um your brand message needs to reflect what's going on now to some degree. And also it needs to be extremely memorable. Okay, I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Now, in order to get all these things across, what you need to be is a storyteller. And some of you will have quite obvious stories around your brand. I mean, I have one wonderful um, client in my fast track to success group who is um, using a, 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 an amazing ingredient that she found in Burma and it's not been used in cosmetics before. Now that's a story and she's working with a community in Burma. Um, that's a ready-made story but we all have stories and often we're too close to ourselves to um, recognize what that story is and what the power of our brand could be. So these below are just ways that you can communicate that story. Okay, so you can do it through video, music, poetry, wonderful colors, animations, photography, um, catchphrases. You can do it through offering a really unique service or a really unique way that you deliver your products. And you could also do it by building a community around you. So, all of these things are, um, some may be within your strengths, some may not. And we're gonna talk in a minute about you, um, but I'd be really interested to know if any of those areas that I've just mentioned are things that you feel that you could actually approach and do. Now I'm at a disadvantage here because I can't see the chat box. Hang on, if I go out of here, no, that's going to, um, that's not going to help. Um, so Faye, could you tell me if anybody is, is, is coming up with any reasons why any, any of these items that they feel that they could use to help with their brand message? I 
seem to have lost, I don't know if I've lost Faye. Have I lost you, darling? Okay. Okay, so, um, hello, Terrier. There's Terrier drone. Hello, everybody. It's hundreds yes, of you. Have lost Faye. Sorry, but everybody is saying that all of them will definitely help. Absolutely, very much. Videos, possibly, that one is mentioned the most. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Terrier. Okay, so basically, the, this does not have to be complicated. What you need to do is to decide on maybe using two of those elements to make your brand great. You don't have to do everything. I think a lot of skincare entrepreneurs get incredibly overwhelmed because they're trying to attack all the social media um, all platforms at once. Um, they're trying to talk and give a, a number of different messages and they're trying to use a lot of different tools and devices in order to do that. And in fact, it's to your advantage not to. Um, I am a really strong uh, believer in niche marketing. I really feel that as you can reach 3.6 billion people, you are far better to be special to a few, to a select group, than to attempt to be um, uh, special to everybody, because that you can never be. If you try and be special to everybody, you're, you're not going to be special to anyone. So think about your strategy and decide which um, communication medium you are most comfortable with. And then just stick to that, be known to stick to that. I'm just going to show you what I've got to deal with here. Hang on one minute, one minute. Can you see those girls, those naughty girls that have come in the house? <laughs> okay. All right. So let's get on with this. Four principal ways to make your brand special. Now, the first is that you need to be absolutely aligned with who you are, your strengths and your weaknesses, and what your unique proposition is. And that can be um, the reason that I'm setting up this program is I know that that can be harder than it seems because very, very often we just cannot see what's under our nose. Um, but here's a few thoughts on that. So you've got to consider, you know, I mean, this is your business. And if you're not comfortable running it or you're taking yourself way out of your comfort zone in order to promote it, you're not going to succeed. You're just going to get overwhelmed. So if you look at these issues right at the beginning of your journey and decide what your strengths and weaknesses are and work your business around that, that is going to help you to come up with a really authentic USP and brand message. So, you know, why did you start this? How old are you? Um, it's much easier to talk to your own age group than it is to try and talk to teenagers if you're an if you're an older person are you introvert or extrovert you know are you going to be the face of your brand or not it's very powerful if you are but if you're really really uncomfortable with that then make the decision that you're not right at the very beginning now who do you know this is an absolute critical question because if you start off with people, prospective customers around you that already know and love you or know you by reputation or perhaps know you because you were in a particular industry or a particular community, you're going to succeed much faster than if you try and get a completely new audience on board. You know, what budget do you have? How are you going to market this? Uh, do you love luxury? Do you, do you, are you trying to make economy and simplicity the nature of your brand? So these are all, all questions that you need to um, drill down on. And I, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this program, because what I've actually done here is I've created a questionnaire that will absolutely get you um, thinking and analysing on all of these issues and a lot more issues. Um, and then the package actually is a questionnaire, a long in-depth questionnaire that should take you several hours to complete. And then an hour's call with me where I will absolutely nail your brand for you and tell you what to do, what tools to use and how to take it forwards. 
And then it's also, you'll also get three um, months free membership to my fast track group where I can continue to coach you. So you'll, I'll tell you more about that later, but I just wanted to bring that up now because that is what my program is going to be all about. It's about getting you to look really, really hard at all these questions. Okay, so I just want to tell you a story because I work, I mean, my, what really lights me up is working with clients one-to-one, -one, but that can be, um, I'm, I'm only working with four a year now. I'm only choosing to work with four a year now. And the investment that you have to make tends to reflect that. But I had a client some time ago who came to me, um, Formula Botanica student, I know many of you are, who came to me um, with an idea about setting up a, a skincare business. And I had a, a, during our first session, because in our first sessions, the first session of a 16 week program, but that's when we tend to define um, what this brand is going to be about. And in the first session, she, she, I get to know people and I discovered that her passion in life was actually horses. And also her work had been around horses. So she had a big um, community around her. So uh, I said to her, well, look, what about forgetting skincare? And why don't you create a range of natural, organic horse grooming products? And that's what she's done. And she's done it really successfully. Um, and that's, that's what I mean. So it, 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 if there's a lot probably going on in your life um, or experiences that you've had that are extremely relevant to what your brand should be about, but you might not be able to see them because I remember her saying to me, that was right under my nose, why didn't I see that? Okay. Um, now, the second thing is that you need to be talking to the right people in the right place and in the right language. And this goes back to my uh, point about, you know, if you're my age, you shouldn't be trying to market to teenagers. Um, you need to understand everything that you do needs to be customer centered. So you need to have a really strong understanding of who your customer is, um, where they hang out and how they speak, how they address the issues in their lives. So here are the sort of questions that you need to ask yourself or you need to research because a lot of this is data. Um, you know, what influences them? Are they serious, frivolous? What are they scared of? You know, what problems do they have? Are they corporate or are they creative? I mean, I have one client who worked um, who works for a big uh, tech, tech company. And we're creating a range specifically for those guys, the, the, the tech corporate guys who don't have a lot of time, who have a lot of style, who think inventively. Um, and this is how you get your message to be special. Look, I've, Sophie, Marilyn, come out of there. Chickens are wandering rampantly around my living room. What's their income bracket? Where do they like to buy? What are their buying habits? And all this can be done on Google. All this is data research. And it's stuff that you don't do at your peril because it's stuff that you really need to do before you begin this journey and before you decide on what your range is going to be, why it's going to be special and how you're gonna sell it, okay? Now, this is another brand that I work with, which will illustrate this. This is um, Osco, and um, the entrepreneur behind this brand um, lives in Hong Kong, and there is a lot of pollution in Hong Kong. And also, we were going through an era, we are going through an era of climate change. And um, she came to me wanting to do a, a general skincare brand, and we actually honed that right down to a range that would protect people against pollution. And that has 10 times more power than a range that is anti-aging or um, uh, moisturizing, you have to get even blander. Um, so I hope that you're getting a feel of what I mean about 
really coming up with a message that is special. So th this could not be clearer. It's anti-pollution skincare. It talks to a problem. It's beautifully presented. Um, and this is really what you've got to get to. And you can actually do it with one product. You don't need a whole range of products. So we're going back here to what's your budget? What, what forms of communication are you going to use? Um, whatever. But being special is more powerful than being general. So the other thing that you've got to uh, fully understand is, is, you know, why your products will appeal to your audience. You know, well, again, this is a personality thing. It's also a timing thing. What's going on now? Um, what's going on in the world? The world is changing. The world's changing 30 times faster than it did 20 years ago. You know, we blink and things have changed. And you need to keep on, on, on top of what's changing because it's a huge opportunity for, a, for a, um, a green entrepreneur, a natural entrepreneur, because you don't have the huge um, problems of a big company behind you and all the administration. You can make decisions like that. Um, and you can do it through what you put out on social media and what you um, your your whole approach to to things can be in very very flexible. So this is you are in a huge advantage there. Okay, so what is it about your product? Um, I'd really like to get you putting. Could you put in in the um, in the chat box what you think is the key selling point to your product? And perhaps um, somebody, Terry or Faye, if she's around, could tell me what, what they're saying. Yeah, no problem. I've asked everyone to put some comments. Can you make me co-host again, though, Melinda? It's gone off. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hang on. How weird. There you go. Thank you. Anything coming up? What is your USP? What is special about your product? Um, natural ingredients. No, that's not special. Essential oil. No, not special. Helps seal in hair moisture. Hair moisture. Now that's more interesting. Um, that's more interesting because I assume this is aimed at a group of people that you know suffer from this problem. And that's actually solving a specific problem. Uh, so, African skincare. African skincare. Yeah. Um, if it has, uh, yeah, yeah, this is a, a, a kind of minefield. Um, there are a million things that you could do with African skincare. Um, but if you just say African skincare, you're not going to get anywhere. I mean, you've got all the political scenarios around. Um, um, around the, the black movement at the moment, the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, you've got different skin types. You need to hone down within that to decide exactly what problem you're solving within that, um, within that story. Okay, so you, can, you, you come up with something general and then you have to dig deep and dig deep and dig deep to come up with a solution or a, um, a particular inspiration um, and then just go with that. You're not going to miss anyone. You're not that you'll sell more if you're talking directly to a, what immediately seems to be a small problem than a big problem. I mean, let's look at Formula Botanica. You know, Formula Botanica is a, a school, um, an online school for natural skin care entrepreneurs. And um, they've got, you know, there's 40,000 people in the group. Um, if I said I was a business, when I say I'm a business coach and I specialize in natural skincare, the other coaches in the community think I'm mad. You know, they're business strategists. Well, that's not special. You need to be special. Um, it could be an innovative ingredient. It could be that you're using amazing colors and your whole story is around your colors. Um, it could be that you've got a fabulous scent, which is a harder one um, with online marketing. It could be that you're using special dispensers. Um, 
perhaps it's generations, well, generation specific, it ought to be anyway, but you need to keep drilling down. Have we got any more comments there coming up? Oh, one minute. I think I can get to chat. Hang on. Ah, I found what I found out. I found out a way to get to chat. Okay, so Zara's on hygiene. Yes, like, well, hygiene is incredibly relevant right now. Um, it's just how you're going to present it. Um, affordable products, Lou. Lou. Um, okay, uh, affordable is fine, providing you're making a profit. Because it's quite difficult to be a lot of, um, I, I know a lot of people come to me and they say, I want to be organic, I want to be natural, and I want to be accessible, I want my prices to be low. Well, actually, those don't go hand in hand, because unless you can afford to, to have huge, huge um, product runs, which you can't, uh, <laughs> most of you can't, I mean, like people like The Ordinary, it's going to be very, very difficult to keep your basic costs down so that you can be affordable. And if you try and sell cheaper than you should, which is a whole different story um, <laughs> uh, as to why you shouldn't do that, you're not going to sustain your business. And that is your business. Your business is to sustain your business. So be careful on those price points. What else have we got here? Um, Personalized products, Vale. Yes, I love that. Um, you've got to make sure that there is a way of scaling that, though, if that's what you plan to do. Um, locals wanting artisan, but with smart style. Yep, that's doable. Um, okay, protect using kale in products as a key ingredient. Well, if you've got lots of um, background as to why that works, that's a lovely one. Um, Skin moisturizing, mm. uh, Mel, I'm talking to Mel Mitchell. Um, uh, skin moisturizing will kill that message of I have rosacea, so I make products that are gentle and try to increase moisture. You would actually be better off making products that will not irritate people with rosacea, full stop. Okay. Um, Maria? Declutter, I don't know what that means. I, I assume that means make things really, make a really simple procedure and a simple regime. And your special, your brand message can be around having a simple regime. Historic and ancient, Emma, Emma absolutely. Um, traditional is great. You've just got to make sure that everything you do around that supports that. Um, I don't know, minimally processed. Mm. Um, Esther, I, your packaging sounds gorgeous. I paint my own packaging with old paper. I love that. Made with water straight from the well. Okay. Um, yeah, I used that one, Diana. Um, okay, so there's lots of ideas here. Um, some of you have got it. Affordable, yeah, there we go. Ethical, ethical. Yeah, again, you've got to, you, you would be better off to um, drill down on that. It needs to be more special than ethical. I mean, what does that mean? Does that mean authentic in the community that creates it? Does that mean um, no packaging? Ethical could mean absolutely anything. Wow, loads of comments here. Um, soft skin, not enough. Ageless, not enough. Um, plastic free, yep, but you're up against it because that's what everybody is doing. Um, help skin management of eczema. You've got to be really careful there, Eliza, because you can't make claims. The most you can say is that it doesn't irritate eczema. Wise and distinctive. Well, that could be interesting. I quite like that word. Uh, handmade in Ghana. I love Ghana. Um, homeless shelters. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Let's, let's move on from here. That's really helpful. Um, so this is another, um, example of somebody that I've worked with that had a really, really clear message. And if you're on my Instagram, there's actually a couple of interviews with Stevie Lomas, who runs the Camel Soap Factory. 
and um, Stevie came to me a lot of years ago when I was just doing soap making classes in London and I went on to coach her and her vision was so she started with a vision she started um, the right way rather than starting with the product her vision was that she wanted something that could be created in Dubai with local ingredients because nobody makes anything in Dubai. Um, and she'd identified camel's, camel's milk as the ingredient that she wanted to use. And from there, she went to um, the idea of creating soap. So she didn't start off saying, I want to create soap what shall I use with this? She started off with a vision as to what the market needed. Um, now she started off, um, it, it, her husband lent him his man, her, her, his man shed and she made some soap and I taught her to make soap and I helped her expand and plan her factory. And um, she turned over 2 million last year. So that's what a great idea can do for you. That's the difference between having a really, really focused brand message. And her message is tourism in Dubai, take a piece of Dubai home with you, okay? And the fourth, um, the fourth important uh, thing that you need to do or that opportunity for you is to disrupt the normal sales channels by finding new and original ways to serve your customers. And now is so, so right for that because we've already been forced to do that to a large degree. We've been forced to, um, to sell online. Um, and there, there are a number of ways of doing this. Um, so it, it, what this does is it requires, um, have I got that in the right place? Yes, so disruption. So disruption could be tradition. You know, we live in a, a, a tech society. If you go back to really traditional values and traditional beliefs, and you use that as your brand story um, in this world that we're being robbed of this to some degree, um, that could be very strong. Climate change is obviously a really pressing issue and a great um, story uh, to use behind a brand. And so is community. In fact, more than ever, people need community. So this is about trying to create your brand for a very, very specific group of people. Um, putting humor in a brand is, is, is a great way to, to make friends and influence people. And looking at original sales channels, so that could be um, ambassadors, it could be um, getting, uh, going into offices, putting baskets in offices and selling there. It could be all sorts of things, but this is where you as an entrepreneur need to own your power. And just because something hasn't been done before, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So all you have to think about here is how can I reach people in an original way? And again, this is something that I will cover I would decide for you how you were going to do this in the, in this program that I'm going to be offering you. Um, political statements are great. You know, we've got um, big statements around color. We've got big statements around gender. All of these um, are potential niches for your brand. Now, you didn't think when you started making pots of cream that you were going to have to get into all this or even think about all this, did you? But, you know, building a business is also about personal growth. So these are exciting add-ons. I mean, the marketing is, is, can be really, really creative. But if you give it the thought and the time and the research that it requires right, right now, you're going to start off with a huge advantage and you're going to save large amounts of time and wasted money by just going out there with a lukewarm proposition. Okay, now you could also have a message around service. You could go that extra mile. You could be contacting every customer personally after they've bought a product from you. Um, I'm sure that if you know, many of you are doing the Formula Botanica, I'm sure that they're going to include something on what your package looks like, or, you know, what it's like to receive your products. That whole experience, you want to touch on 
ex people, the experience of buying your product. It needs to be all part of a story. Or that could be your thing, this special service that you give. And also there's, think of, try and think of something around the word sharing. So I'd really like you to come up with one word for me that could be lead to your USP. So you've got, you, I hope you've got my gist now. So in the chat box, just put one word for me that, um, let's see if I can get this chat box back, that will um, actually, you think might sum up your brand. Okay, where's my chat box? Just about, here we go. You got it, okay, Melinda, or I've got mine. It's okay, I think, I think I've got it, I've got it, okay. Innovative sustainability, Lenny. Yep, I'd like to know how you're gonna do that, but that would be great. Um, Lou, affordable Swiss, Swiss bath and shower. Now, again, I don't like this word affordable. <laughs> I don't like this word affordable. There's something that you need to know here, and that is Swiss bath and shower says to me luxury um, or it says to me it's something that not everybody can have access to and people that buy cosmetics that invest in natural cosmetics want to spoil themselves there's also a really key reason why things might not seem to be affordable it's because unless something has a decent price tag People don't think it's special or else they doubt that it's any good. And that is a fact. That's not just my view. That is a fact. So think really, really carefully about that, Lou. Truly luxurious, Deborah. Um, okay, well, we'd need to know more. I, I, I get, you, I, I get, when people come up with um, statements for me, I get drop downs and I don't know where they come from and I get visual drop downs and I can immediately see a lot of silk. Um, in fact, Indian silk for some reason. Um, so you need to look back at what I said about what tools are you going to use in order to get that message across. Um, I do like Montrese, I do like your help seal in hair moisture that absolutely solves the problem and says what it's about on the jar. Yep. Um, um, okay, oh, one minute, we've got 29 new messages. Sorry, I'm right up the top. There's a million messages. A whisper of a memory, I love that. Who said that? Tam, love it. A whisper of a memory. Um, poetry, reminiscence, nostalgia. Nostalgia is so important right now. Um, um, Paula, uncomplicated ingredients, back to basics. Back to basics is okay. Um, it has to have a twist to that somewhere. Um, because if you want to go back to basics, you can buy your stuff in, in boots. Um, you can buy Nivea. Um, so it has to have, have a real twist there. Again, it depends how you're going to illustrate that. Me time, not enough. You're awesome as you are. Then why do they want to buy your products? Ancestral, I love. Soothing, not enough. Um, lifestyle, athletic, yeah. Work hard. I have. I'm working with a sports brand right now. I love it. Um, work hard, play hard, and take care of you. Work hard, play hard, and take care of yourself. <coughs> it's lovely. <coughs> I love that. Uh, uh, look, I'm getting too far into this. I'll be here all day. But um, I'm glad I've got you thinking it down. That's really what I wanted to try and do here. Okay, so um, let me see where we are now. Okay, so the biggest mistake new skincares make is that they look to their competitors for marketing ideas. I mean, I mean, how boring is that? Why would you do that? If you go onto Instagram, everybody seems to be doing the same thing. Um, uh, well, not everybody. I mean, some of them do it a lot better than others. But the thing, what you need to be doing, you've got to, to get a message out there that is great in this climate and to be heard above the noise. You have to be punching a lot higher 
than everybody else. I mean, I, I'm not going to mince my words about this. It isn't easy. This is not an easy journey that you've that you've taken yourself on. Um, I just want to give an example of this that I absolutely love, and that's uh, the brand Brewdog. So I've gone outside the industry, and I don't know if you're all familiar with Brewdog, but it started off as a, a little home brewery, a uh, beer brewery in Scotland, and they're turning over billions now. And what they've done here is they've aligned themselves with um, the post-punk, I'm not suggesting anyone go with this, although you could, post-punk apoc apocalyptic motherfucker, excuse my French, of a craft brewery. Now, it is a little craft brewery. And what they've actually achieved with this, so they're being political, they're being, um, um, it, uh, don't give a don't give a a, a a damn if you like. It's a really strong way for what they're doing. They're absolutely um, provoking people, inspiring people to be themselves and to be part of this. In the same way that Apple got the creatives, these guys are getting the rebels. Yeah, and they're building a huge business, huge substantial business, doing that changing now their slogan is changing the world one glass at a time now how strong and beautiful is that yeah um and it also the other thing that they've done we bleed craft beer you, you, this tells you about the passion of the entrepreneurs behind it we blow shit up this tells you about you've got to be a rebel to join us um Without us, we are nothing. Now, that's a really clever phrase because what it's saying is you are part, by buying our brand, you are part of our community. And they go further because they've got a huge Kickstarter scenario where people can actually buy into their company and, and help fund them, but own a part of them, which is an absolutely brilliant thing to do at this time in terms of making people a part of something, involving them in their journey. Okay. All right, so the, now these, these are, I want you to tell me, look at these four slogans. These are popular slogans. And I want you to tell me what they all have in common. Whoops, sorry, I lost it. I'd be really interested to see if you spot this. Well, memorable, yes. Short, individualistic, yes. Short and simple, yes. But that isn't what I'm aiming at here. There's something else much more elemental that they've all got. Ah, Maria's got it. Maria Coconu's got it here. They are customer centric. They refer to the client. They, not one of those tells you anything about the products. It's a plea or an inspirational statement to the customer. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, a phrase like, because you're worth it, which is L'Oreal, um, is hugely, hugely strong. And I guarantee you that it costs them hundreds of thousands of pounds to get it, or certainly tens of thousands of pounds from the advertising agency that created them about it. And, you know, it, what they've done in order, what the branding agency has done in order to get to the point where they could come out that statement, is basically what I want my questionnaire to do for you so you can do this yourself. Okay, because this is not easy. It isn't just about coming up with a clever phrase. It's about understanding all those things that I've already talked about. The, um, Sarah, you've got it right, absolutely. Um, it's about understanding who you are, what your brand is, who your customer is, how they buy, what their worries are, all these sort of things.
the last point is that you need to find appropriate and original ways to go to market. I think I've discussed this to some debut. So, you know, it's not just about setting up a website or selling, trying to sell on Instagram. You know, you have to think of bigger and cleverer ways to get to the people that you like. And again, we're wide open for this. There's all sorts of possibilities at the moment. I mean, if you look at Clubhouse, which has just started um, and is absolutely rocking it, um, they started by their, their special point was that you had to have a private invitation to join. Now that's so clever. And that kind of um, is, is a reflection of what I was saying about people want to be that actually about the, the high price point was that, oops, got a pussycat joined us, was that things had to be, um, if things are expensive, people think that they're special, they think they're going to spoil themselves. If it's a private club and you've got to be invited to join, then you think it's exclusive and you want to join. If you think you can't get in, you want to get in. This is how this is how we work. Um, selling at corporate offices, selling through community groups, cross-channel sales marketplaces. So there is more to life than Amazon. You know, every country has a, an Amazon. Amazon is a great platform to sell on, incidentally. But there are every country has its own Amazon type marketplace. So finding out about that. And what about Zoom pamper parties? You know, we're all on Zoom. Um, sell your products directly, invite people to parties. There's all sorts of ways to do this. The strongest of these is strategic partnerships. But again, um, if you come on the program, we will actually determine what your message is, what your visuals or your words or your story, how that should be, what tools you need to use, where we're going to um, put those put those communications and also what your route to market should be. And we're going to do that via a questionnaire and we're going to do that via a one to one session. OK, so uh, I'm going to give you questions in a minute, but uh, let's just uh, go through this again so that you've got it. Um, Faye, could you put the link to the um, landing page so they can see what it's about in the chat box sweetie um so what you get now i love working one-to-one -one with clients um and i have a 16-week program and it's um as i said it's 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 a big investment and it's going to be an even bigger investment going forwards um mainly because i'm getting older and because when i'm working one-to-one -one with a client i put uh, an awful lot of creative energy and time into it. And quite honestly, I get really tired out. Um, so I'm cutting down to very few clients a year now, but I still want to work with you because it really lights me up to actually work with someone one-to-one, -one, get to know the whole story about them, who they are, their strengths and weaknesses, what their dream is in terms of the brand, and their ideas, hear all their ideas for the brand and how they got to the point where they've started. I mean, this is this is manna from heaven to me. I just love it. And um, so what I'm so I try to get this down to a really, really affordable package for you guys. Um, so what it has is a really in-depth questionnaire, which will make you drill down on all the stuff that we've talked about today and more. Um, and then we have a one to one strategy session which is around an hour, um, around an hour. Now, if we don't get everything done on that, um, it doesn't matter because you're also getting three months free membership to my fast track hub. And in the hub, you also get the opportunity to talk to me personally. Wendy, anyone, we've got quite a few hub members on this today. Um, uh, tell them what it's about. Um, and there's also a whole bank of, I've had some wonderful experts on there giving workshops. You'll get access to all of those. Um, and it's a place where we can follow through and I can check what you're doing and how you're getting on with it. And you can ask me any more questions that you've got. So if you want to look at that, I think Faye is going to put um, hopefully the link up in the chat box. Um, there you go. It's, it's in the chat box. It's coming up on the next slide as well. But as I've said, we've had a lot of people register for this. So if you want to do it, make your mind up, go in and click 
by and come and join me on this. So once I get your questionnaire, um, I, I want 10 days because I want to read every single bit of it and take it in and come up with a story for you. Um, and I want to do that before we talk. So there'll be 10 days before between you giving me back your filled in questionnaire and me um, and, and us having our call. So that I've got, th and this is, this is what I do on the first session with all my um, 16 week clients. But in this instance, because I haven't got the time to get all your background information, I'm going to get it in writing from you first so that we can spend the whole of the session really drilling down on what that information means. Sophie, would you go outside, please? Goodness me. Melinda, we've got a couple of questions. Yes, que yes, we can open. Hang on, I think that's it. Let me just. OK, so that's it. I'll keep that up on screen. Um, yeah, would you like to ask me the questions? And I, I, I mean, I, I don't know if we can do video on this and they could ask them. No, probably not. It's too many. Um, yes, Montrese, I can certainly, I've worked with some great hair care, hair care brands, um, one in particular um, whom I absolutely love. Um, you'll see all the details, Esme, if you just go to the link, um, click on the link and the price is on there. Um, so I've tried to keep this as affordable as possible. Um, and yes, it's first come, first served uh, shibu, shibu, shiban. And I've got to say that if you send in a questionnaire and I don't think I can help you, I read it and I will give you your money back. Um, I, I'm only, you know, I, I, I really want to be able to help you with this, but this is my little bit of brilliance. If I'm brilliant at anything, this is it. So I'm really, really excited. It's why I wanted to put this together for you. Um, Okay, so Wendy likes me anyway. Okay, so um, I would like to thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you got something out of that. Um, look, there's hundreds of you on here. I'm sorry we were a bit bit messy with our tech, but we're we're hopefully on top of it. And um, yes, you'll, you'll get the replay, Sabrina. Okay. All right. Have a lovely day, lovely afternoon. Please stay safe, everyone. Please. Bye.